Hi everyone. In high school you'll have learned various ways for solving equations. But imagine one day you come across an equation that's impossible to solve. What can you do? In this video we'll look at a method that allows you to get closer and closer to the solutions of such an equation. It's named after Sir Isaac Newton who was one of the first to use it. Are you ready? Let's go. You probably know how to solve first degree or linear equations and also second degree equations using the general quadratic formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and although you may not have come across them there are ways of solving polynomial equations of degree 3 and 4. These involve special formulae, changes of variable and so on, and were known about as early as the 16th century. For equations of even higher degree, solutions are possible in special cases, and we'll talk about these in a future video. Moving on from polynomial equations, say you want to solve the equation e to the x minus 1 equals 0. You can just move the 1 to the other side to give e to the x equals 1 and ask what values of x make e to the x equal to 1. There is only 1. x equals 0. And that's the solution. But what about the equation e to the minus x minus x equals 0? It looks straightforward enough, doesn't it? So let's just do the same thing and move the x to the right hand side so we have e to the minus x equals x. Can you see any values of x that are a solution? What about x equals 0? No, that gives 1 equals 0. The fact is, no matter how long we spend, we're not going to find a solution this way by trial and error. So let's try something else. How about taking the logarithm of both sides? That gives us minus x is equal to log x. But then what? It still doesn't lead to a solution. We obviously need a completely different approach. If we can't find exact solutions of an equation, then at least we can try to get approximate ones. It's much better to be able to say the solution is close to such and such a value than to say we've no idea at all. So let's look at how we can use Newton's method to find approximate solutions. To begin with, remember that if a function is differentiable at a point, then the function can be approached very well by its tangent line near that point. That's the key fact behind Newton's method. So imagine we want to solve an equation. We can move everything onto the left hand side and express it as f of x equals 0, where f of x is an expression or a function. We'll assume that the function f is differentiable and that this is its graphical representation. To solve f of x equals 0, we're looking for the points where the function intercepts the x-axis. How can we do this? First, we have to have a starting value for x, a real number that we'll call x0. This value may be given to us, or we may have some idea what value to choose, or we may just have to pick one at random. In any event, let's assume that we have some initial value, x0. Now we're going to construct a sequence, x0, x1, x2, x3, and so on with the aim of getting a closer and closer approximation to the solution of the equation. Starting from x0, because we're assuming that f is differentiable at x0, the tangent line to f at x0 approximates well to f near x0. But what about as we move further away? Well, we've no idea, but this is where Newton's method becomes useful. Instead of considering the function f of x, we consider the tangent line to it at x0 and where this intercepts the x-axis, x1. Of course, this isn't the solution 
of our equation, but we can take it as a first approximation of the solution. What next? We repeat the process, except instead of using x0, we use x1. This gives us a new tangent line and a new intercept on the x-axis, x2, which is a closer approximation to the solution. Then we repeat the process again. From x2 we get x3, from x3 we get x4, and so on. And in this way we generate a sequence, which in many cases is going to approach quickly and as closely as we want the solution of the equation. Now let's go to the analytical part and obtain a general formula for this method. We started from x0, for which the tangent line has the equation y minus f of x0 equals f prime, the derivative of x0, times x minus x0. x1 is obtained from the intercept of this line with the x-axis. On the x-axis we're at a height of 0, so y equals 0. Putting y equal to 0 in the equation of the tangent line gives 0 minus f of x0 equals f prime of x0 times x minus x0. Of course 0 minus f of x0 is just minus f of x0. Then applying the distributive property, this equals f prime of x0 times x minus f prime of x0 times x0. Moving the second term onto the left hand side and dividing by f prime of x0, we get that f prime of x0, x0 minus f of x0 all divided by f prime of x0 is equal to x. Finally, Dividing each of the terms on top by f prime of x0 and reversing the equality, we end up with x equals x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. Remember, we're calculating the intercept point of the tangent line with the x-axis, namely x1. So we replace x with x1 to give x1 equals x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. The first thing to notice about this equation for x1 is that f prime of x0 appears in the denominator, so it can't be 0. If f prime of x0 were 0, the tangent line to the graph of f of x when x equals x0 would be horizontal, in which case it would never cut the x-axis. So we definitely want to choose a starting value x0 for which the derivative is non-zero. Having obtained x1 from the starting value x0, we can then obtain x2 from x1 in the same way by replacing x1 with x2 and x0 with x1. This gives us x2 equals x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. Moving on we can obtain x3 using x2. x3 is equal to x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2 and so on. In general if we want to calculate the term xn from the previous one xn minus 1 we do it in exactly the same way. xn equals xn minus 1 minus f of x n minus 1 over f prime of x n minus 1. And this is the general formula that allows us to obtain the value of each approximation or iteration from the previous one. All being well, if the function is differentiable, this method, Newton's method, should work fine most of the time. It's an effective way of getting a good approximation to the solution of an equation quite quickly. Of course the equation might have more than one solution. How could we then get approximations to them all? 
What we'd have to do is consider a variety of initial values and go through the approximation process for each one. If you find that you're not approaching anything, or if you get the same solution as before, then try another initial value and keep on trying until you get approximations of new solutions. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave any comments you have below and if you haven't already, please subscribe and we'll continue working to give you the videos that you deserve. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.